Arson remains the largest single cause of fire in England and Wales, accounting for almost 50% of all fires attended by fire crews. In 2017-2018, fire crews attended 167,291 fires in England. 80,610 of these were started deliberately, resulting in 161 deaths. In data published by the National Fire Chiefs Council, it was estimated that arson cost the economy a staggering 11 billion annually. The loss of life paired with the huge economic cost of arson means that reduction of arson is an important strategic interest for police forces worldwide. Obviously, in order to reduce cases of arson, early intervention must take place to prevent fires from being started. However, not every fire can be prevented. So it's important that when a deliberate fire does occur, we are able to successfully identify and prosecute the perpetrators. And in doing so, create a strong future deterrent for other individuals. However, fire scene examiners will be all too aware that investigating cases of arson can be fraught with difficulty. By their very nature, fires are destructive, spreading and consuming evidence as they grow. In fact, many fires are started with the intention of destroying evidence. Furthermore, the actual process of putting out fires with huge quantities of water can further reduce our chances of locating useful evidence. But despite this, valuable evidence can still be retrieved. Upon entering a fire scene, an investigator may typically use a powerful white light to assist the initial, initial search. Using a tool like the Crime Light Auto, the investigator will be able to conduct the search across multiple wavelengths. Then they may even choose to record the entire process and perhaps communicate any images they take back to the incident room via the auto's Wi-Fi link. Items of evidence detected at a fire scene may include incendiary devices such as lighters or matches, the presence of ignitable liquids or, or accelerants, Perhaps also indications of forced entry. There could also be trace evidence, so hairs, fibres, finger marks, blood and other body fluids. Potentially we may have evidence of other crimes in addition to the possible arson. So there may be weapons, there may be human remains, um, or perhaps maybe even drugs or the remains of a clandestine drug laboratory equipment. Let's start by looking at the items that may have been used to start a fire. Incendiary devices such as lighters or matches. Where there are splashes of petrol or lighter fluid or perhaps another form of liquid accelerant on a suspect's clothing, this could prove to be valuable corroborating evidence. Whilst many common liquid accelerants are clear and practically invisible when soaked into the fabric, we can often use the different wavelengths on a crime light to reveal what the eye cannot see. At the scene, the examiner may use handheld light sources or a device such as the Crime Light Auto to search for accelerants. Back at the lab, a screening tool such as the Crime Light ML Pro could be used to quickly identify traces of accelerant on items or clothing from the suspect. Many common liquid accelerants can be revealed by the fluorescence which they emit when they are subjected to intense narrowband illumination, either in the blue the blue-green or under green wavelengths. As the fluorescence of these liquids is very weak, it is essential that examiners employ a powerful light source and the appropriate filter goggles or camera filters. Here at Foster and Freeman we use anti-glare coated ProVision lenses to make certain that no trace is missed and to ensure the best possible image during photography. A fluorescent light source or all-in-one illumination and imaging device can also be used to reveal traces of physical evidence at the crime scene. Using lights in the very low end of the spectrum, so UV, violet, blue, blue-green, we can reveal items including fragments of bone or teeth, which will fluoresce brightly against the typically dull soot and ash coating the environment of a fire scene. While it can hide traces of evidence, the presence of a thick layer of soot at a fire scene may also benefit the examiner by providing a protective coating under which finger marks may remain undamaged by the fire. 
One of the other evidence types which you may come across in an arson scene, particularly in an arson scene with human remains, is bone or teeth fragments. Now here we're just using a white light on our fragments at the moment, on our crime light X serology. So the crime light X serology is one of our newest crime lights and features five different wavelengths of light, including the white light seen here. We can also cycle through the light sources and we have UV through the violet, blue and blue-green. Now bone and teeth will naturally fluoresce under different wavelengths of light and the crime light exterology is perfect for searching for bones and teeth. Here we're using a blue light source which is inducing the fluorescence and this may make it easier if you're having to search crime scenes for human remains to actually visualise and find this type of evidence. The ML Pro is a brand